Welcome everyone, this is Planet Mitch from Planet5D.com where we bring you the best HD SLR news on the planet. We've got exciting news today. We're covering the brand new 5D Mark III announcement and I had the pleasure of going out and spending a little bit of time with Canon and I took a good friend of mine by the name of Barry Anderson who has written this incredible book called the DSLR Filmmaker's Handbook which is available now on Amazon. It's one of the best HD SLR movie making handbooks there is. So I'm going to introduce Barry Anderson. Hello. Hi Barry, how are you? I'm doing well, and yourself? Doing very well. I'm very excited about this new camera. Yeah, it was a good time going out to LA and I think we should uh, we should share some of the things that we uh, got to take a peek at. For those of you uh, who were looking at this, there is a URL listed there. This is planet5d.com slash Barry. If you uh, want to jump in and grab a copy of his book, that's where you can find it. And that's a simple little link. Thank you, Mitch. No problem. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the 5D Mark II. And I actually created some fancy slides. Isn't that cool? The excitement that everybody's probably already seen is the 5D Mark III will be available starting in March. And Barry, don't be shy about jumping in. No problem. <laughs> uh, this list price is $34.99, and if you want the kit, it's available for $42.99, which will have the, the original 24-105L on it. They're going to <laughs> keep the 5D Mark II in the line, so there will be three full-frame cameras available, and the 5D Mark III will fit in between the 1DX and the original 5D Mark II. How do you think that works for most people, Barry? Well, I think that was one of my big questions, is when they came out with an update, did it mean that they were going, you know, put the 5D Mark II on mothballs, and if people weren't happy with the camera, you know, kind of where would it go? So I actually think it's a, a very smart move on Canon's behalf um, to keep, you know, kind of their flagship camera here going. So, you know, it, now I think the debate's going to gonna become, you know, the new camera is a thousand dollars more in price, and are the features, you know, ones that warrant that price upgrade, and kind of where does that camera fit for the type of shooter versus the 5D Mark II? Um, and I think that's what we're going to kind of get into here today. Right. Uh, one of the other exciting things that was on that slide was the fact that they're using the new Digic 5 processor. I've said it again, Digic 5 Plus. It's hard yes. to it's hard to remember to, <laughs> to throw in that little plus. Um, I don't know why I have a hard time with it, but that's the same processor that's on the 1DX. Yes. Although the 1DX... And I think for a lot of people, if they're kind of... Doing, I was going to say, if a lot of people are doing some searching, that, you know, it appears that a lot of the specs are taken from the 1DX. So if you've been doing any any reading because you're, you know, a camera file and you wanted to kind of get all new information, that you're going to find that there's a lot of similarity similarities right. in the uh, feature set and uh, hardware in the... Uh, uh, Mark uh, uh, Mark III versus the 1DX. So continuing on in the um, stills mode, and I apologize for that thing <laughs> appearing, all those little windows appearing on top of that. Uh, they, as Barry just said, br have brought the uh, autofocus system from the 1DX down to the 5D Mark III. Uh, it doesn't quite have the shutter that the 1DX has, so if you're if you're really looking for those high shutter uh, frame per second burst modes, uh, you're going to be wanting to stick with the 1DX. But the 5D Mark II has doubled, almost nearly doubled, the frame still frame. Gosh, sorry, my tongue is just not working right. The up to six frames per second, and let's see how this works. I'm going to try this. I recorded the audio of that, and I think it will play through here. And no, it's silent. <laughs> so I blew that. All right. On the Planet 5D blog, there will be a video showing the sound. You see me trying to show it there, <laughs> and it's not working. But... Um, yeah, well, Mitch, the, basically, you know, the normal shutter, everyone's very familiar with kind of the sound. The silent mode isn't truly, you know, noiseless, but it just really, you know, really takes down that noise. If you're trying to, you know, 
either kind of be inconspicuous or you know you're in a place where you don't want to hear you know giant clicks you do have the option now to have it slightly slightly more quiet but take a look at the blog and we'll put that up for you well the 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 key there um is silent mode sounds very much i don't know if that's coming through it sounds very much like the live view mode when you take a, a shutter an exposure in live view on the 5d mark ii and when you're not in live view obviously this is much slower than the new six frames per second the other advantage is that uh, they have brought the 7d metering system over so not only have we gotten a much better autofocus system, but we're also getting the better exposure meter that's in the 7D, which is good news, which includes apparently some color information that the uh, 5D Mark II wasn't using before. So according to Canon, you get better, richer colors in your exposures. They've also bumped the ISO up quite a bit, and we got to see some examples when we were in California of the new high ISO, and I, I wish I could have taken some uh, pictures with the camera that we were using uh, because it's, it's phenomenal. I had a situation where, as uh, Chuck Westfall was talking about the new camera, I was holding it, and it was very nice for about an hour almost. I got to hold it for almost an hour. And in the room, there was a... a lowered roof and off to the side you could see the pipes in the upper reaches of the building and I grabbed the camera and I took it over and the autofocus could see there were I could barely see the pipes with my naked eye and on the creative uh, mode or the, it was it was fine not only finding those pipes but focusing on them very quickly now I did have on that camera was the brand new 24 to 70, uh, and I don't know how that compares to the old 24 to 105 that I would normally be using, that's my walk around lens, but the autofocus system was incredible, even in a dark place where the 5D Mark II used to just hunt like crazy. So that's one of the biggest excitements, I think, for the still shooters. I would say that the 5D Mark II still searches. <laughs> yes. Did, I don't think you got to play with the autofocusing, did you? I didn't. No, I was kind of taking notes there. But I think you'd, you'd said something there about the ISO. And the ISO, so if you think about the camera, they've almost broken it into two systems. Right. There's a whole feature set for being a still camera and then a feature set for being a video camera. And things like the ISO, you can actually get a higher ISO on the still side than you can the video. Um, and I was more focusing on the video side, so I don't have all the exact specs. But on the video side, the ISO is basically, you know, two ISO stops better. Right. So where we were saying, you know, you know, 6400 was the top range. And, you know, the debate whether or not it's usable depending on your, your, your image and what your story is and whatnot. Well, on the new camera, you can go up to, I think it was... Uh, was it 10,000? No, no 20, 20, 25,600. Yeah, 25,600. And at that, it was cleaner image than the 6400. So you could use the 25,600 and actually get better than the 6400. So you take that back, you drop it down two stops. And if we said 1600 was kind of the max that you'd want to shoot, you know, you're still getting, you know, you're still shooting, you know, probably at 6400 on the new camera. And it would give you an improved image over the, uh, the 1600 that we've been used to in the 5D Mark II. Right. So, you know, again, extreme low light, you know, it just makes it that much easier to shoot, that much cleaner of an image, and uh, gives you a lot more flexibility. So that's exciting. Very exciting. So continuing to run through, and I clicked on the wrong thing. Here we go. Uh, on the still side, we got excitement because we now have two S two card slots. And although... You know, I think both you and I were a little disappointed that they're not both CF cards. Well, I'd say, yeah, I mean, obviously, I hate carrying around multiple uh, cards. You know, I use the H4N and stuff like that, so I have to have SD cards, you know, for some of the things I'm using, but the majority, I, you know, I have several cases full of CF cards. Right. And the two disappointments is, number one, I need now CF cards and SD cards if I want to use both slots for my camera. 
But then also the fact that, you know, on the still side, you have a lot more flexibility. Again, you can write to both cards at the same time. You can use double backup. You can go ahead and write a high-res image to your CF card and a low-res image to your SD card. Those, you know, I can see a usefulness for. But on the video side, they're not tied together. If one card fills up, you can't flip to the other side. There isn't a way to kind of have it record on one and then before it shuts off, record the other. So really it's just, you know, an extra slot and it's really, you know, you'd have to switch slots anyway. So it's not really a whole lot easier in my opinion than just swapping out your CF card. So I don't see a lot of benefit on the video side. Right. But again, if you're using it to stills, there's quite a few functions there that uh, could be very interesting for you. Right. I'm going to throw this image up while I'm here because it, it's something that, that was surprising to me. I actually was somewhat surprised to see this is the 5D Mark II on the left and the 5D Mark III on the right. And I was surprised to see that the 5D Mark III is actually bigger um, almost all the way around. It's, it's a little bit thicker. It's taller. You can obviously see that it's taller. Uh, the thing that I really liked about it hand holding was that the grip the front of the grip wraps around in my fingers much better than the old one does uh, and again I have big hands so I really appreciated that aspect of it uh, another side by side sort of image you can see here that that it definitely it's again on the right and thanks for taking these images Barry uh, it's taller and a little bit thicker what I was going to say is that the you know, I kind of think the 5D Mark II is more of kind of a box shape. It's a lot more squared with a lot more angles. And right. the new one has a lot more kind of curves and kind of, it's almost like a new model car. Right. They took it from a little bit more boxy and kind of added some smoothness to it. So some people might think it's a little too too fancy and other people think it fits their hand great. So I think it's going to be an individual preference. Right. But for the most part, you know, yeah, it's a little bit bigger, a little bit wider, but it's pretty much the same same size and footprint. You know, you fit your camera bag, you know, weight's about the same of what you're used to. So uh, I don't think there's going to be a, a whole massive difference for a lot of people. Right. And the back of the camera, as you've seen on the spy shots, uh, was that uh, it looks much more 7D-ish, which I'll, I grew into. And the other thing that I want to say about the body itself uh, my 5D Mark II, the battery door is really creaky and kind of icky, and I have I know a lot of people have commented on that in the past. And specifically looking at the battery door on the new uh, 5D Mark III, I was very impressed. The whole thing just feels more solid. And so that was, that was good news to me. All right, I'm going to jump back into the slides. Um, the thing that I know you really liked was that they have this new option to customize the file names. So the first four characters where it used to say IMG or uh, MVI, you can now make that say something new. The reason I like that is, you know, a lot of times I'm shooting with multiple cameras and, you know, everybody's kind of worked out their own workflows and whatnot, but I think it's really great, you know, kind of before you go out and shoot, go ahead and program everything and, you know, you can go ahead and set, you know, set those first four characters up to first four characters so you can, you know, identify between cards, between cameras, whatever you want. And I think, uh, you know, they always had that on the uh, the 1D, but I'm glad that they brought it down to these because I think that, that could help anybody who's shooting, you know, with more than one camera. I think that could be a, a huge yeah. addition. And I, I, I don't recall them saying that in the 1DX, so I'm kind of surprised that the 5D Mark III has it and the 1DX doesn't. Are you sure that it doesn't? I thought they had it at the on the uh, Mark IV. Well, oh. if if they did, I don't recall them saying, you know, in the NDA or whatever okay. for the One DX that that it had that feature. Because this is the first time I've heard of and it. I, it's wrong, but I was pretty sure that the uh, the Mark IV had that functionality. But obviously, you know, the difference of five to six or six to seven thousand versus twenty five hundred <laughs> uh, that feature wasn't enough for me to right. upgrade. Right. Uh, the other things on the stills. Uh, the raw mo three raw modes. Now the the 5D Mark II had raw and S raw one and S raw two. So they've I think they've just sort of renamed it as M raw and S raw. But there's still three modes. So if you want to shoot smaller raws but still be able to edit them like a big raw, then you can. And we I didn't mention that there's the uh, sensor is 22.3 megapixels, which is just up slightly from 21.9. I think it was. 21.3, whatever that was on the 5D Mark II. And I, I've asked Canon, I haven't gotten an answer yet, and I hope to have it soon, as to what 
why they would change it just that little bit. Um, I'm sure it has something to do with the, the new sensor technology they have, and they showed us this fancy diagram of how the the sensor is gapless and and how they've enhanced the photo cells themselves and all of that stuff sort of went over my head. The key part of that was that we were going to get <laughs> lower noise images and higher ISOs. I think there's a chapter in my book uh, kind of diagramming out what they were talking about, Mitch, so you can read that when we're done. What book? <laughs> but no, the, the new sensor is great because basically a lot of times if you're looking at the diodes and stuff on a sensor, kind of where the light hits and how it gets trans, uh, translated into the chip, usually they either cram so many on that there's overlap and that can affect your image or that there's actually gaps. And the way they seem to have engineered this chip is that so it kind of all the angles work where there isn't gaps and there isn't overlap. So it's maximizing all of the light coming into the chip and then transferring that into the digital image. So you know, in layman's terms, it's basically utilizing without overlapping the entire space of that sensor. They have a couple of other features on the still side, and there's a bunch. I mean, just, I said a couple, but there's really a bunch. Um, and all of that is documented um, on the other posts that I've made for the 5D Mark III. But one feature they did highlight was this new thing called comparative uh, uh, playback, which looks very much like the screen we have now. So there's, you, and it's only available for stills. So on one, you can have two images up side by side, and there's a rating button on the back, so you can rate the images and see which image is better uh, on your camera. And obviously, my image is better than yours, so I'd rate mine higher. You're, you're so deadpan, Barry. <laughs> I, I can't. When, when Skype dropped me, I can't see what you're pointing at. Oh, so you can't. Oh, I'm and blind. So, oh I man, I didn't, I didn't know I was supposed to be referring to something. So, <laughs> well, you can watch it in the playback. <laughs> uh, the other thing that they mentioned uh, was that the 5D Mark III is really in the middle of the 1DX and the 5D Mark II, and that includes the ceiling and the weatherproofing. And so, this is a bit better than the 5D Mark II. Um, but not as good as the 1DX. So that's another reason for the additional price point. So let's dive into the uh, video features. Uh, I think we've already sort of covered some of these. It's nearly identical to the 1DX. Uh, it uses uh, the... We didn't... I don't think we really said this. The, the high range on the ISO and the still side goes up to 102,400... Uh, but on the video side, you're limited to the base ISOs. You can't get into the extended ISOs on the video. You do get the reduced noise, and from what we were told, although we didn't get to play with the video side of it, and we certainly didn't just get to stick a car uh, card in there, uh, Chuck said that the Moray and the Rolling Shutter were vastly better, uh, comparable to the 1DX. And I like the way you tell the story, Barry, about that. Huh. Well, no, I'll just, I mean, I'm not telling the story. I'm just <laughs> telling what Chuck said. So Chuck said, everybody knows that probably, you know, arguably the number one problem with the 5D Mark II is the Moray problem. Um, and, you know, there are people who talk about, you know, just eliminating things from the image, you know, change your wardrobe, don't shoot at the building, whatnot. Um, you know, I know there's filters out there for it now. Um, but in this one, so if he, Chuck said if he rated it on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the absolute worst, 1 being the best, um, that he'd rate the Mark II right around an 8. And he said that uh, the Mark III, he would probably rate it about a 2. Right. So he said it's not all, you know, it's not 100% eliminated, but, you know, in, in a scale terms, it's all but eliminated. Um, and he said because of this faster processor and everything as well, that it is greatly reduced. Rolling shutter, again, not eliminated, but uh, greatly reduced. So I'm excited to uh, start seeing some footage and getting my hands on the camera to start testing those things. Alrighty, we're going to run through these last bits fairly quickly here because I know you need to go. They've brought down the time code feature from the 1DX. The body also has a headphone jack, which was uh, launched on the Nikons, and so Canon has jumped on that. It has the audio metering right on the back of the LCD, and if you watch the video that I post in one of the other blog posts, you'll see that uh, demonstrated. And they also have a new feature where you can 
trim the view on the back of the LCD to either a square, a 4x3, or a 16x9. So I know some of you like to uh, crop your movies differently. So that's available. And now we're going to dive into our final sort of summary. And the question, Barry, is who's the target buyer for the 5D Mark III? Well, before, before, before we do that, okay. let me throw out a couple things that I think people want to know about. Okay. Number one, uh, a new feature that hasn't been on this camera is they've actually brought in at 720p, <gasps> 50 and 60 that. frames per second. So those that want to match what they have on the 70, it is now in the uh, 5D Mark III, which I think is great. Um, but again, not in the 1080, just in the 720. But again, it exactly matches the 70. So I think that's, that's uh, a good thing. And then I thought there was one other note that uh, we hadn't mentioned. Let me check my notes. Um, I think that maybe is everything there from the video side. Um, I can't believe I forgot the 72060. No, that's why, that's why two heads are better than one. <laughs> so, um, the headphone jack. Oh, uh, we had asked this question. We don't know for sure oh, right. if the um, HDMI out when recording, if it drops down to SD or actually stays in HD. Um, they didn't know that at our meeting, um, the people that were there. Um, they said that they thought it was mostly a processing issue. So with the faster processor, they were leaning towards saying it should be HD, um, but couldn't confirm. Um, so we're trying to get uh, confirmation uh, you know, from Canon. Otherwise, as soon as they come out, we'll test it and let you know. All right. So let's dive into the final question. Who is the target oh, buyer? What, what, one, <laughs> one more thing. One more thing. So All right. everybody's to the 12-minute uh, record limit right. on the 5D Mark II. Well, what's great is this one now brings up to 29.97 uh, or 9. Or no, 29 minutes, 59 nine seconds. seconds. Right. And there's actually two different uh, resolutions you can record at. Um, all again in H.264, but one is called All I, which gives you, if you're recording in full HD on a 16-gigabyte card, you get 22 minutes of video. And if you do IPB, um, it actually gives you about three times as much. Um, uh, it gives you 64 minutes. So it gives you, so if you don't need the highest quality, um, they're letting you in camera be able to you know, manage your cards. But you can actually get, you know, a slightly over double the amount of record time without having to start and stop, which is uh, nice for some projects. And I'm going to clarify because you said that again. <laughs> You said the res two different resolutions, and they're two different compressions. Compressions, yes, pardon. Not, Thank not, you for the correction. Yeah, because it's not jumping down the to seven twenty or something no, like that. No, no, so, just it's just further really compressing the right. issue, uh, compressing the image. Right. Uh, which for some projects is fine, and for others, uh, you just stay on all all eye, and you're and you're at the the top, uh, you know, right. the least amount of compression. And both of those are different than the compression that is on the five D Mark II. Yes. All right. Okay. Now can we go? Yes, now we can go. Now you can have <laughs> Who is the target buyer for the 5D Mark III? And who will stay buying the 5D Mark II? Um, well, and that, that was a question that I was kind of asking myself as I sat there. I said, number one, I like the fact that they're keeping the 5D Mark II in production. Otherwise, if people were unhappy with this, you kind of get a rush of those. And it, it could have it potentially been a mess. I'm not sure if it's a great idea to call it the 5D Mark III. Because we've just been used to calling it 7D, 5D, you know, 1D, right. and now we're always going to have to clarify which 5D are you talking about. So that might be a minor issue. But in terms of who the camera's targeted at, um, I think that a if you look at them as kind of two cameras in one, the still side I think is a revolutionary leap. I think that those that are shooting stills, the autofocus feature I think is alone justifies the price. I mean, it is so far superior, so much faster. That it just, you know, it's, you know, when I use my 5D Mark II for shooting and it's low light, like Mitch said, it's just sitting there and you just hear it, you know, laboring over and over to try to lock focus. And this new one is just like, in an instant, it's there. Um, I think the video features aren't revolutionary, but I think they're a good evolutionary leap. But I think there are a lot of people that, you know, are going to say, you know what, you know, I have a filter, you know, for the Moray. I don't really shoot that, you know, sort of stuff with it. So I think there's going to be a lot of people who will stay with their cameras and or, you know, just buy a Mark, uh, 5D Mark II when they want their next camera. But I think this is really aimed at people who are doing both video and stills. You know, the beefier stills side 
you know, for me, that's all I would ever need. You know, I probably wouldn't ever need to go up to the 1DX um, with the still side that I'm shooting, you know, what, what this camera uh, allows you to do. But then on the video side, you know, I shoot a lot of, you know, films and commercials and whatnot. And I think that, you know, having digested it here over the last, you know, week or two, um, I think that uh, I think that I'd probably have a mix of cameras I'd be working with, but I think I'd probably moved. You know, next time I bought a camera, I would upgrade to this camera because I think the improvements in the more and the rolling shutter, the little bit longer recording, um, some of those features I think are just going to make you know save my save my you know what in post. You know, you're not going to be monkeying around with different things. So I really think that for people who are you know producing stuff that are going to go off to higher quality. Uh, outlets, whether it's television, you know, going to movies, whatever, and it's not just going to be compressed and put on the web. I think that it's a great upgrade. But again, if it's more kind of a casual camera that you're doing fun projects and mostly just doing stuff for the web, you know, a thousand dollars, you know, is a lot of money that you could spend on a really good lens and just you know spend some time setting up your shots and you can get around a lot of these issues like uh, most of us have been for the last three years. So I think again, if you're a, a dual, if you're fifty-fifty, if you're doing a lot of stills and a lot of video. Uh, I think the camera makes sense, and if you're doing a lot of high-end video, I think it makes sense. And then, other than that, I think it's just up to people. I I I'd let, tend to say, you know, spend some more money on some great lenses, keep perfecting it in the 5D Mark II, and if you can find more work where you need to upgrade, go ahead and do so. But it's not it's not it's not the definitive where you know everyone should immediately sell and just upgrade. You know, there there is the way they've structured it. There is there is a place for everybody. And I, I agree with everything you just said and want to add that I know that many people are going to be, I don't know if it's many, I'll, there's going to be some vocal, uh, there's going to be people who are upset about the price of the 5D Mark III. And they're you know going to say, well, they didn't add enough video features to it. But let's remember that Canon has announced that they are bringing a cinema EOS DSLR to market sometime this year. And therefore, they've got to have something to put on that camera that's not in the 5D Mark III. So I'm, I'm assuming that it's going to be a higher price range. It's going to be lower than the C300. It's going to have some good bells and whistles to it. It's going to be mainly aimed at the video side where, in reality, you know, as you said, Barry, much of this is focused on the still side. Mm -hmm. And so they're, they're, they're definitely showing that there's going to be two paths there. If you want to be doing more video stuff, you may want to wait until you see what the new Cinema EOS DSLR has in it. Um, they've yeah. already said there's going to have a 4K capability. With uh, an asterisk. <laughs> with an asterisk, because that's going to do motion JPEG as, as the output. And I don't, I don't know how good the quality that is. Um, and it may be only be 720. We don't know all the details about that yet. But So, you know, you may, you may want to wait to see what that camera is like. And we don't know when that's coming yet. So, like you say, uh, people are going to have to make their own minds. It's not just brilliantly obvious that everybody's going to upgrade to the 5D Mark III. But at least we've got several options, and they kept the 5D Mark II in the line so people can get that for what they need. And we'll see what the Cinema EOS DSLR comes out with later on this year. Yeah, I think the I think in terms of my in 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 terms of my you know if I get to create my own camera, the only thing right now that it looks like it's really missing is getting rid of the H.264 uh, codec and having you know the ability to either you know plug in an external device and get a, uh, a higher bit rate or a, a you know an uncompressed image out. That's really I mean we're getting to the point now where we're being pretty nitpicky. That's why I said it's not revolutionary. Had they had that option, I think it would have been. Um, but I mean, pretty much everything we ask for them to fix, they they have. So I, I, you know, I, I don't see how people can be too mad. I think the 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 debate will be is is it worth the extra thousand dollars, which I think is a worthy debate to have. But I think Canon, I think Canon did a really good job and mostly delivered everything we asked for. So they're listening. I know I know there's one group of people who are expecting or praying that the 5D Mark III has raw video. And none of the DSLRs have that yet. You know, the red has it, and it's a much beefier model. And you know, you're in the fifteen thousand range if if you want that kind of stuff. And it may be on the Cinema EOS DSLR. We don't know yet, but I don't think that Canon's going to put that on the 5D Mark III. And three or four years, maybe down the road, that could be a whole other issue. But if you're disappointed that the 5D Mark III doesn't have raw video, then you were expecting too much. 
And I've seen it on Twitter already. So, <laughs> I mean, I know there are going to be people that say, well, I'm not buying it. So that's why I threw that out there. No, it makes sense. So thank you very, very, thank you very, very, <laughs> ah, <laughs> thank you, Barry, very much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to uh, chat with us and to go with me because I think it was, it was great having two minds listening to that uh, discussion with uh, Canon. And thanks to Canon for inviting us out for that event. Yes. All right, so everybody keep your eyes on Planet 5D. We'll be having gobs of coverage. Uh, if you catch this in the morning, we're going to do a live show. Barry and I will be back on in the afternoon doing a live show, which will be recorded. So keep your eyes peeled. We'll have tons of coverage on Planet5D.com. And if you just want to make it really simple, go to Planet5D.com slash 5D3, and you'll get right to it. Yeah, make, make your list of questions and bring them. We'll make sure to answer them. Right. Thanks a lot, Barry. All right. Thanks, Mitch. Talk to you soon.